They did it. Finally, after all this time, this husband and wife duo developing Planet Crafter has released their game. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and yes, indeed, Planet Crafter is, as of April 10th, 2024, reaching 1.0 full release status. Multiplayer is being added up to 10 players, three new biomes, tons of new cinematics, and also a completion of the story amongst other things that everybody has been wanting. We've been covering the development of this game for a very long time. Many, many people have played this game. Other content creators have enjoyed it and loved the heck out of it and built some really cool bases, including here in Raptoria. So welcome aboard and good to see you all here. If you'd like to get Planet Crafter, an open world survival base building and and exploration game for yourself the link is down below in the description so thanks to planet crafter for sponsoring today's video and sending over a key so long ago so we could follow the roadmap for this one the team has done a stellar job of making a game where essentially you're just uh, on a planet that's dead like mars or something like that a dust bowl and you bring it up to a living breathing planet with animals and trees and lakes and rivers and streams and it's incredible and it's a really really fun game and of course now with 10 player multiplayer everybody can build their own base or work on whatever and it's going to be amazing to see how that works in the full release now that's what we're here to celebrate for today so just real quick again check out the link for this one down below in the description make sure you sub to the channel and turn on that notification bell to let youtube know you want to see more planet crafter as well as bopping that like button because we're going to be doing some live streams in this of this game and in this game too with all of our friends and it's going to be amazing to build a base both in multiplayer and in single player so without further ado let's take our first look at planet crafter first time in a while for the 1.0 release <laughs> let's go isn't it pretty so this is the somewhat end results of what it's like when you get very late in the game i uh built this base many many years ago it feels like anyway and it is beautiful and fully functional and has nuclear reactors and solar panels and fish farms and oh you can see all the fish down there much more cool labs and even off in the distance a like rocket launch platform in order to send up satellites and whatnot to keep an eye on the planet it's gorgeous and uh, this is just one of the bases that i built amongst many other mining sites now this i think is uh, something we all want to do is build a giant base with catwalks everywhere and uh, railing and just make it all look cool and each building in this game has its own purpose. Of course, some things to uh, process materials, some things are about farming, and other things literally are just leisure. Yeah, I've got a little house up here too with like a lounge and a bed and stuff that I built long ago. The game also has teleporters, which makes it really easy to get around, and so we can go to different areas. Welcome to the Nugget Lounge, by the way, everybody. Bring your dipping sauce. Lots of collectibles here that we put on display, and a uh, lovely little bedroom uh, that's above us, as well as a nice little uh, way to look over all of our... Uh, I guess our work lots of little mining equipment out there and tons of things to see and do so this is what we're working up to a lot of you ask me what's the premise of the game what's the end game what do you do in this game well this is it you're building a giant fully functional base that has communication and the ability to create uh, things like steam and uh, also uh, heat in order to well heat the atmosphere and create pressure and whatnot create an atmosphere and this game has a lot of it literally a very good atmosphere and let's teleport for a quick second oh look at that overflow storage here we come so I'm uh, pretty much on the other side of the map now where this is kind of how the map and game begins where there's nothing here and eventually water and of course trees and other life forms will come on in so you go from this a dead or dying husk to this now you find crash landed ships and derelicts and all sorts of things as well as lore in this game so it's uh, pretty damn cool and uh, when you begin you have no oxygen at all uh, but here we can basically breathe easy because there is an oxygen uh, well, oxygen in the atmosphere. So we have uh, all that around us. So it's pretty cool. So lots of things to find, lots of things to do, and uh, the game just keeps getting better. So remember, all the feedback that everybody's been giving, the team is hard at work at adding things that people want, bugs that people find, and uh, no game is perfect. But I must say that this is the perfect way to make a game because they've been so involved with trying to make the best game for everybody that they could make, and that's amazing. Day-night cycle, there's rain, large uh, meteorites will come down and crash into our uh, little base too, where we can get all sorts of special materials. And this is kind of a base that we've been building throughout the development of the game. So as new things have come out, we've been adding and stacking things on uh, on top of each other over and over again. Like, for example, these large domes here and uh, large farms and nuclear reactors. So it's been really cool to build a base as the game's been developed. But now I want to build a base and show you all the like beginning of the game and what it would be like at the very start to uh, build in this game. Now, interestingly enough, our uh, little crash-landed uh, landing pod is down there in that lake. 
uh, I started pretty much next door. And luckily, when I built my base, the water uh, didn't go any much higher than this. We got real lucky. Hey, they're common larva. Hey, let me pet you. There you go. Okay. So yes, when we started this game, we magically built a base here that was above water level, and we got real lucky. So cool stuff. But yeah, there's all the flowers, and there's bees, and all sorts of things that we put all over the planet that's amazing. As well as a story. A story about a f faction known as the uh, Wardens, let's say, who are here and or doing something. There, there's, there's some shenanigans going on in this game. There's also automation and drones to where you can connect all your different bases together. So here you can manufacture them and program them too to go off to other mining sites and whatnot and bring materials back or trade them between bases. So it's a really good opportunity for players to work together and uh, not have to really do much more than programming and of course science uh, facilities and much more. Okay, well let's go ahead and uh, start fresh, but there is a lot to see here in this game. So just imagine that probably after about maybe, I don't know, 50 to 100 hours, you can build something 10 times the size of this as now the game is more streamlined and a lot more fun in many ways. Oh, one last thing I did want to show you though, which is really important here, is all the things you can work on in the game. So uh, eventually we're about to get mammals, so we'll have things like, I don't know, elephants, for example, will be uh, an, an example of a mammal. So right now it's frogs, and eventually we can get up to uh, that by adding more things. Now what else does the game need? Well, we're adding plants, insects, and animals, and biomass, and that's the circle of life, right? Insects and animals can eat plants, and sometimes animals eat each other, or both, if they're an omnivore, and all of that is, of course... Uh, everything in total. So the goal is to get that number as high as possible and also keep an eye on your emails. Ooh, a frog display? Ah, oh, cool. They've added a ton of stuff, so I've got a lot to unpack here and find out what's new. But yes, this is the uh, bread and butter of the game, and now it's time to start fresh. So let's go. Ooh, my power plant. Nice. So big props to the devs for making it so that way literally their very first version of the game has been working through all the other versions of the game from the very first day to now everything functions like there's not been anything that's been lost or there's been no, no like crashes or anything that's been bad it's been awesome and smooth now what's interesting is watch that planet on the right side that's where we are now with beautiful lush forests and gorgeous water and and of course an atmosphere and here's where we're going here in just a second as we start a brand new game let's see if it'll do it let's back out go to play. Oh, it's not going to do it. It should show the desert planet from the beginning. But hey, look, we have a bunch of different game modes here. So we have anywhere from relaxing all the way up to hardcore and creative too. So if you just want to build some stuff, there are many different game modes in addition to very easy modes too. So you can sit back and relax a little bit more. I think standard is your kind of more intended version of the game, but you play the way you want to and that's that's on you. And lots of different settings. This is really cool because again, if you're a newer player or a pro player, or if you, there's some things that you like to do or don't like to do as much, you can turn things on and off. So for example, if you just want everything unlocked at the beginning, but still want to have the survival elements on, you could do that too. So yeah, lots of cool stuff and uh, lots of options for everybody. Okay, let's go ahead and create ourselves a new planet and get down there. Well, you, you know what I mean. Oh, hey, real quick, look, I did it. Our planet with uh, 5.19 TTI and zero. So you can see the differences between the two. <laughs> it's really cool. It's like the same rotating globe, so you can see where the continents are and where the oceans were made and stuff. Very cool. All right, let's start fresh. Let's go. Oh, hi. <laughs> Now keep in mind, there's going to be much more dramatic cutscenes and whatnot in the 1.0 version when it drops. But we're here to basically say, hey, 1.0 is coming out and it's going to be bigger and better than ever, which is really cool. So, yeah. That was a rough landing for sure. Our mission is to advance the terraforming process of this world. You'll need to generate oxygen, heat, and pressure. Meet uh, 175,000 TI and create a blue atmosphere. All right, cool. So we're safe here in our ship, and uh, if we leave, of course, we'll start losing oxygen. So, yeah, we can't go very far. Now, remember that base I showed you before? That's where it was right up there. So our starting location is the same, and what eventually will be a big old lake. So remember, if you try to build stuff down here, it could get flooded or whatnot. So little pro tip. 
but we have much more to learn and much more to do. Now, a cool thing about multiplayer is, uh, one thing I didn't show at the start is when you start a new game, you can name that anything you want, and you can also create a, uh, basically give a friend an invite code so that they can join you at any time. So pretty helpful to be able to uh, have somebody hot join or, uh, you know, hop in and hop out whenever they have time for. So we're going to go ahead and gather all these materials here with our little uh, decombobulator. We're going to gather iron, cobalt, ice, things like that will make us uh, oxygen and water to drink and some other things too. So very important to pretty much gather every morsel around your base. And then of course our, well, I guess your drop pod and our tasks are on the left side. So we need to make a backpack, an oxygen tank, and then a microchip uh, constructor um, inside the thingy. So yeah, we get about maybe 30 seconds to go out and then we just kind of go back into our uh, pod. Nothing too stressful, right? We just kind of, you know, keep keep running back and forth to make these things that they recommend. So uh, I guess we can try to make our T1 backpack and there she be. All right, let's make our oxygen tank too. If we can, we need more iron and magnesium. So we're going to need to go look for that stuff as well. Everything in the game looks the same. So anytime that you see something like, for example, here, this is titanium. Yeah, I knew that based on the uh, look of it. It'll always kind of look like a bunch of gray meatballs. Iron will kind of look shiny, uh, like a geode or something sticking out of the side of a, of a, like a rock. And so it's very easy to identify what things are from a distance. And it's very helpful to uh, kind of do that. That, I think, is silicon there. And so if you point at it, you can see it too. Now there's a flashlight in the game, but we need to uh, make a torch microchip. So there's a lot of upgrades for our character that'll eventually get upgraded and unlocked later on. Oh, I guess we're full on stuff, so let's go to our uh, little uh, toolbox here and dump stuff off. But wait a minute, I forgot to put on our tier one backpack. So we can click on that and boom, extendo inventory. Very helpful. Although regardless, I'm still gonna drop off a few things here. Maybe mostly ice, because that is not going to be something that we're going to craft with but will be something to give us water later on. We do start with a Lerma seed, something we can plant, which is our main goal, and then also space food, which looks like a bunch of Capri Suns to me. Oh, tasty. So let's go ahead and uh, look for more things. Now, eventually, we'll find crash-landed uh, ships and whatnot. A pro tip is there's one right up there. You can see it right when you come out of the ship. And inside there is a bunch of materials. You can also uh, take apart debris and things that uh, block your path that then can be used to... You're basically recycling and making them into uh, other things in the future uh, for your base. So pretty helpful to be able to take one thing and turn it into another. A lot of salvaging, and uh, that's what's good. Now, I think a lot of players may consider this to be like, oh, it's like Subnautica in space. And uh, I guess you're right. Although Subnautica also, you know, took place on a planet just like this one does. But this one, you get to make the planet and the creatures. Although I'm not sure if any of them are dangerous or whatnot. You never know, uh, you know, you never know. A mosquito might bite you, and you might be allergic. I have no idea. Anyway, let's go ahead and try to make our uh, little... Uh, oxygen tank. Now we need magnesium. One last thing we haven't yet had the opportunity to nab. So let's go find some magnesium. I forgot what that looks like, so we'll have to take a little tour around to see if we can find it. Uh, some of our starting resources... There it is there. Yeah, there's magnesium. Uh, some of our initial power is solar and wind. And, uh, of course, uh, solar light might be... Uh, or wind power. I think it might change throughout the game. I'm not sure if it's constant based on the atmosphere. But it is something that... Uh, you know, of course, you're going to need quite a few of them because they're not as good as, like, let's say, a nuclear reactor. So it's kind of cool to be able to uh, eventually run out of uh, power. In other words, like, you don't have power that's good enough yet, and you have to upgrade. Like, oh, man, 400 solar panels? Not enough. I need a nuclear power plant. It's cool to have it be a shortcoming. And you know you've made progress. There's our Tier 1 backpack and our Tier 1 oxygen tank, increasing our capacity. Very nice. Now we got to make a Tier 1 drill, and uh, here's our microchip construction, deconstruction, and torch. So again, we need a lot more magnesium. That's the thing we need the most of. A lot of magnesium. Let's go looking for that. So it kind of looks like a, I don't know, like a, a kind of like that, like a blooming flower or something from a distance. So now that we know what we're looking for, we can go looking for all that stuff and um, bring that back to our base. There's silicon there. I think we might need some of that too, but I'm going to go on a run for more magnesium. Now we can make more of those blue boxes that we saw and, uh, those are really important for storage. And there actually are blue boxes hidden around the world, too. If you find one, there's hidden uh, items in there. And there's golden ones, too, that you can discover. And uh, they have even better goodies in them. Lots of rare plants and uh, other parts that, uh, well, eventually you'll need for things like mining iridium and or launching rockets into space. And not to mention when uh, meteorites come pouring down on your uh, head, too, you'll want to take cover 
inside, so uh, make sure you build a, a nice fancy base with all your materials and uh, all those things you find in those boxes will certainly help with that. Alright, now there's also some points of interest and landmarks in this game that are really well done too. A lot of cool and unique things that I don't think I've seen before. And, um, you know, like a aluminum farm or like aluminum mines or something. Like, like a weird, I don't know what you'd call it. There's an area, there's a map eventually that we can unlock. I didn't show it to you, but when you make satellites into GPS satellites, you can actually expand the map and do have a map that you can review to see where things are, so that's pretty cool. We now have a construction microchip, so now we can build stuff. All right, so how exactly do we build? I think we go to, uh, we scroll down here, and then I think we hit Q, yeah. And then we can build stuff. So now we can build a living compartment, a door for that, stairs, platforms, we can build uh, heaters and wind turbines. We also have the veggie tube for that little uh, plant to go into, as well as some screens and a helpful storage crate. Ooh, is it getting windy out? Oh no, oh, oh boy, okay, wow, they, okay, whoa, 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 that was almost in the face, bro. Okay, so the thing I told you about just a moment ago, I'm, I'm, I'm actually trapped in my ship. Uh, the meteorites are coming down immediately. Oh my goodness, usually that doesn't come out until later, but these guys are dress, uh, dropping fresh material on our heads. I don't know what, what's in those, though. That could be super alloy. Oh, boy. Um, eventually, these rocks will disappear. I don't think I can actually remove these at the moment. So we're kind of trapped in our ship, which is probably good that we're trapped in here rather than out there. But as those strike the surface of the planet, they'll actually drop materials that we can go mine. And I think they stick around for a little bit, so we'll have to hurry as soon as we can. Oh, boy. Wow, this is an exciting start. Glad it happened. It gon' rain, and it sure is. Uh, let's see if I can put this down anywhere. I'm trapped. Trapped like a rat. There we go. All right, finally cleared out. Um, now, I don't think those things can break our uh, base. If we build a base, it, it can't really hurt it. Is there, can I put this on the ground? I think we have to put this on a platform. So maybe I'll make a little little base. Let's be a maniac and go out into the uh, shenanigans here and see if we can survive and find out what the heck is dropping to the surface. So every time there's a meteor shower like this, it could be a whole different resource. We could have magnesium. We could have uh, super alloy. In this case, it looks to be magnesium. Uh, no, I'm... Um, Titanium. So titanium is flying out of there. So we had a titanium shower just a moment ago. Very nice. Oh, and uh, silicon in there too? Oh, a bunch of random stuff. Great. That's cool. Bless the gaming gods. They have given us a lot of cool stuff. All right. I'm going to do what I did before and try to build up here then. Uh, just because, uh, I don't know, it's the closest area and I know it won't get wet. I'll build a little bit of a base up here. And we'll start with that uh, platform. And uh, we'll, try, we'll try to do something cool here, so we'll build it like this. And I think we can hold shift to put down multiple. Or maybe not. Anyway, we're low on oxygen, so we'll come on back. Whew. Wow, what a day. Um, we can also carry an oxygen tank with us, just in case. Also, good news is when our oxygen get, gets real low like this, we're not going to die. It'll just, uh, you'll kind of hear our character, yeah, the heartbeat increase a little bit. And then you got a few seconds to get into your ship. So that was close, but uh, just in this example, that's that's uh, that's how that goes down. Take a little bit of a sip. Mmm, tasty. And a little extra O2 for when we go out there. Okay, let's finish the rest of our base now and try to find more iron. Iron is probably the most important and most plentiful and most used material in the game. You'll find it everywhere. It's used pretty much in everything, and it's just nice to be able to... Uh, like have a ton of it on you like anytime you build something it might more than likely require iron like it, there's a pretty big chance so let's go ahead and keep building our little uh, platform here and uh, see if we can maybe build one there there we go make a little room for that iron just trying to clear the area out also I think maybe these meteorites debris from before might be blocking our path so uh, let's go ahead and drop one of these um, let me drop a cobalt there we go we can always come back for these it's okay and I'm going to try to find some more iron so we can build a living compartment and then a door to go in there. So this is going to be our first base. So luckily we have kind of two safe areas. That shelter down there, which seems really far away, and then what we're about to build. And we can always move things around, don't worry, if we, you know, goof it up. Or if we don't like the way we did it, we can always rebuild. There's always the option to do that, so keep that in mind. Okay, let's build a door. We need more iron for that. So let's see if we can find a little bit more. Uh, we could call, I think we could deconstruct stuff if we need to. And um, there's some more iron there. Perfect. Oh, no. We're almost out of oxygen. I think I'm going to die. Oh, well. Well, it's been nice knowing you. Just kidding. There we go. We had our oxygen tank there, so we're good. Oh, 
No need to stress. We're good. All right, and now we can breathe easy in our little uh, hab. Okay, so now this is the start of our base. We don't have any power, but we do have oxygen in there no matter what, even if the power fails. It's kind of like a, a backup emergency system. Now the next thing I think we should do is probably go get some food. Where you see our little heart, we're not necessarily taking damage from being outside, but it's um, the fact that we just haven't uh, eaten anything in a while. So, oh, and we can also label stuff. So we can uh, we could just call this duff if we want to. Yeah, well, we'll just put stuff in there. Honestly, I'm probably the world's worst organizer when it comes to stuff until later. I like to just dump everything in multiple boxes. And then when I have enough stuff, then I start to organize it. Because then I know what I've got, how much of it I've got, and what is kind of more plentiful than other things. Like, for example, as I mentioned the iron earlier, you're going to have a lot of iron. So you may as well make, like, a dedicated storage for that even at the beginning. But I wouldn't know that if I was playing for the first time. So it's uh, kind of a nice thing to now know and have the uh, foresight in the future to be able to prepare for it. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, grab some space food and we'll grab some of our ice here too. Actually, maybe we can bring everything up there. Oh yeah, perfect, we could transport everything. Okay. So the next thing will be power. Uh, we can start building some wind turbines if we want to and uh, build some stairwells to go up to our base too. And we can pop in some windows and whatnot. Also, if we don't like our base, which, you know, my base is kind of, eh, you know, it's kind of eh at the moment. But we can always delete all this and move it and get all of our materials back. There is a one-to-one -one, uh, refund on materials in standard mode like this. So we're good for uh, doing whatever we want and experimenting. Let's go ahead and put down another box. Let's put, you know, four in the corners here. And one more. Did I put that all flush? Is that square up against the wall? Okay, I hope so. And we'll do one here, too. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our food in there. We'll put food and drink in here. Ice is not a drink, but it will eventually turn into one. And then we'll go ahead and have a little snack. There we go. And then we'll put uh, iron in here, I suppose. Uh, because we know we're going to need a lot of that. Actually, iron is such a necessity that we actually might not end up storing it. We might end up using it as we build. So I'll just, again, keep with tradition and be messy. All right, let's go out and find some more iron and cobalt. I, I believe for the first few hours, even if you're playing multiplayer, you should have everybody just spread out and just go and grab everything you can and just keep making loot boxes for anything and everything. All of your solar panels, all of your wind turbines, those will require that. Now, the thing about solar panels, too, is, well, they only work during the day, so you might have a drop in the power. And uh, so, of course, wind power is also inconsistent. So it's something where you might want to alternate between the two. And that way you can, of course, have uh, something running all the time for power. Okay, we have ourselves a tier one drill, wind turbine, screens that they want us to build. Obviously, before we build any of those other things, they need power. So we may as well start with the uh, wind turbine. Now, we can build a little turbine farm down here if we want to. There we go. Uh, but I think we'll build maybe some turbines up at the top. So let's, again, try to look for more iron. Iron is the uh, is king. Is key. We really want it. Uh, I don't see anything else iron wise. Okay, let's go ahead and see if we can get some of that transferred over. And we'll put our ice in here. And we're going to run out of room. The ice is going to have to be in multiple different boxes. I mean, there's just going to be so much of it. And we'll have to put a crafter in here too, the same one that was in our drop pod. So our drop pod's still important to us. We haven't really forgotten it yet. It's going to be a valuable ally in our battle against death. We don't want to die to death in this game. Dying to death is, uh, well, if you do that, you'll die. So don't do that. Right, let's build a wind turbine here. And again, we can always delete things if we want to. And, you know, upgrade later on. Okay, cool. Power restored. We have light. Let there be light. All right, a tier one drill they want us to build. Titanium and iron for that. And what else do we have? More, uh, more stuff. Just keep dropping everything off. Titanium and iron. Do we have titanium? We do. I'll grab some more of that. And we'll see if we can make a tier one drill as instructed. So this is a tiny little laser. It'll just uh, basically drill into the ground and release planetary gases into the air, which will then help us to create a atmosphere. Now, I always like to try to build mine as flat as possible. But, you know, if you need to, you can build it on a little bit of an angle. These things are pretty resilient. So yeah, let's go like that. Perfect. It's not perfectly uh, straight up and down, but it's more flat than it was going to be anywhere else. So more ice so we can get more water. And space food will be okay on for a little while. Now, as we explore, 
There will be food and water out there. There will be those boxes I mentioned and other interesting, let's say, points of interest that you can discover that will have lots of materials in there for you. Looks like we're going into another night. There's that crashed ship. I don't have a flashlight, so we're going to have to head back. It's getting a little, little dark. I'm going to try to grab some more magnesium. And um, see if we can nab more iron, to which there is titanium, so that's good. And there's iron. Perfect. Let's head on back. The moment you get that oxygen low uh, warning, you should probably head back right away. It is pretty uh, quick how your oxygen goes. I mean, it's it's pretty... I mean, you'd think it's quick, but it's, it's faster than you think. So, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and build our... Uh, let's try the Terra information screen. That would be uh, this one here. We need cobalt and silicon for that. So there's a cobalt and there's a silicon. And we'll pop that on the wall. So terraformation screen. So this will tell us where we're at and where we got to be in terms of terraformation. So, good news. We're raising the pressure. Uh, we have 15 NPA, which is giving us a terraformation score of 16 TI. So we got to get up to, what was it, 175,000? Yeah. So obviously we're going to need to build a lot more of the heaters and a lot more of the drills. We don't have to just build one. We're encouraged to build multiple. Also, there's different tiers that will be much better than the Tier 1. So um, Tier 1, eventually you got to upgrade to Tier 2. Otherwise, it's just you'll, you'll go mad. You'll go insane. You hear me? Insane. Ah, okay. Let's also try to build a uh, maybe a veggie tube. Can we put that down? Let's see if we have iron. Uh, let's see. Nope, no iron to be found, but we might be able to build the screen progress. Screen blueprints, screen energy levels. Hmm, veggie tube. Ah, yeah, everything requires iron. Can I make a crafter while we're here? Ah, we need iron as well. Oh, boy. Always the iron. Oh, it's a little brighter out, so let's go out and scavenge again. Now again, remember, uh, all of the materials that we mine here on the surface will eventually disappear. The meteorites will bring more things to the surface, but there's also deposits in the ground that we can mine almost endlessly. There is the ability to build extractors that will randomly harvest different materials like the ones we see here. There's also specific deposits for uranium, iridium, sulfur, and a few other things too. So uh, you'll have to build in those biomes where those things exist, as well as other biomes where other things are found. So just keep in mind there'll be a lot of uh, back and forth until you get a jet pack, which you eventually you can unlock. I think you can. there's ways to run faster. And, of course, the teleporter, too. So there's a lot of ways to automate and fast travel. So when that annoys you, uh, all you got to do is upgrade. And upgrading is a great feeling. It really is. Let's go ahead and try to throw everything into our boxes. I would build another storage, but lo and behold, we need iron. Surprise. Are you surprised? I know I'm surprised. Hey, iron. There you are. Cool. I was looking for you, pal. Let's see if we can find some more stuff. We're always on the hunt for stuff and things in this game, so don't think you're going to be uh, not looking for things and stuff. <gasps> and there's our first box. Check it out. We found one. Yeah, some loot from an earlier crash. You can also see another one off in the distance, too. Oh, and look at that. Got some food in there for us. Oh, it's all a full hole almost. Beautiful. All right, let's head back. A lot more iron over there and another box, so... Yeah. Uh, don't think that those blue, you know, blue is not always cobalt. So you got to be on the lookout for that. Let's see if we can make some uh, water out of this ice now. Yeah, I forgot how involved the beginning of this game is. It's, there's a lot to do right at the start. And if you don't know what you're doing, everything's kind of like terrifying to go outside. You're wondering like if you're going to be attacked by a creature or whatnot. And no, this game is relatively peaceful. So you should be okay with, uh, with going out. You're fine. What was that noise? Just kidding. All right, let's go for the Lerma Seed. Pop that in. Good. Oh, cute. A little plant is making O2. Look at that, guys. It's making 0.1 PPQS. Oh, and it's draining 0.35 kilowatts because of the lighting. Oh, that little goober. Oh, no, don't tell me that's happening again. That noise means incoming. Okay, maybe not. All right, let's make some water. Uh, we got to make our Tier 1 Crafter. We'll pop that bad boy over here. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and make some water for ourselves. Oh, water bottles, yeah. Whoa, oh, whoa, that's what we're going to make. Let's make three of those, I suppose. And we can also make emergency um, air, too. So I think at this point we might want to keep one of those on us at all times. So let's take a little sip, uh, throw some of these in storage. We do need ice for oxygen. So it's a two-pronged thing. Oh, my mistake. It's actually cobalt. Oh. 
I'm a goober. I must be thinking of the recipe of another game. Anyway, it's always a good idea to have, uh, you know, a little bit of everything. So that's why we grab the cobalt. I'm a goober. I'm a goober. Yeah, there's a lot of crafting recipes in this game, so forgive me. It uh, slips my mind sometimes of what's what and where to get it. Oh, and it looks like we're full. Uh, let's make another box somewhere. And we could probably make a box. We uh, stack one on top of the other? No. Oh, control to rotate quickly. Oh, thank you. Wow. Pro tip. Let me go ahead and pop this over in the corner, and we'll move this later. This will just be some sort of temporary overflow for junk. Like you, Titanium. I'm talking to you. Let's go to that other box. So the boxes are really worth getting. Uh, another great thing it might be wise to do is when you're done with a box, if you can, if you have one more slot, you can actually zap that box. And, uh, oh, if you have the deconstructor, that is. We'll have to get that upgrade. But you can remove a box so that way you know you've been there. So that way you don't keep thinking, oh, a box. And then y you've realized, oh, I've already been here. And it might be a good protocol for multiplayer, too, that, you know, if anybody has cleared something out to maybe somehow mark it so everybody knows that it's gone. We'll get an upgrade soon that lets us um, deconstruct. So we'll be good there in, a, in just a GIF. Let's see. We go out and look for more boxes. Very important to find those. And also very important to go up to that crash site, as I mentioned, as soon as you can. Uh, but I will advise you to bring a lot of oxygen. It is a good idea to, if you go up there, build a box outside the crash site and uh, put some extra stuff in there, like water, food, oxygen, and then build another box for the stuff you bring out. So that way, if you have to take multiple trips, you have food and water. And then if you find things, you can bring it out and dump it there and then run back to your ship a couple of times. And you'll be all right. All right, I see uh, more iron. Need that. I see we're about to die. Don't want to do that. Cool. And let's keep on mining titanium. Lots of uh, cobalt out here. Lots of iron out here. Looks like a little bit more on the magnesium and silicon side over on this side, but... Yeah, so the ways we can go is there's a canyon over there that we can make our way to. There's a hill up there that we can get to a crash site. And then there's an iridium uh, mine over there. There's like There should be like a sand waterfall there. And then also uh, some aluminum uh, fields over there just to kind of give you a little bit of an early tip. Now, this game has been around for a while, so I think the basics of the game many people have seen and or possibly played. And let me know if you've watched this far into the video. Glory to Raptoria down below in that comment section. Get it going now. And uh, let me know if you've played this game or if you've seen this game or both. I really want to know uh, what you guys have... Uh, well, if you've played, or if you've uh, bought the game yourself, or whatnot, or played the demo, I'd, l I'd love to know. I really would. Oh, look at that. They're <laughs> they're clipping through each other. I can't move this now, unfortunately, because I need the deconstructor, but things like that, I would want to actually move those. You can get away with this, but clearly we should move that, so let's go ahead and build our deconstructor. Thank you. And we'll pop that in. Cool. And then we should also build the screen for blueprints. Uh, so we should build this thing here. We'll take silicon. We'll build that on the other side of this screen. And this will help us to unlock new technology. That is a tiny little screen. Uh, they probably want us to build a desk, but I guess we can build it on a one of these for now. <laughs> That's really uh, cheesy, but we did it. All right, we'll find more things for blueprints later, and we'll unlock a bunch of stuff. But as you can see, as we hit levels, we'll kind of unlock things that way. So as it says, find blueprint microchips and decode them here. And then there's also goals to unlock things like, for example, at 300 Ti, we unlock the tier two backpack. So the faster we get there, the better. Right now we're at 72. So we can spend a lot of our time making power generation units and then uh, those drills that we saw before. Let's make a tier one heater. That Oh, that takes iridium though. So we'll have to go find that. Uh, but we can also do the crafts screen progress. Although I'm not sure which one that is. Oh, is that it? It's green energy? No. We might have to unlock that too through blueprints. So kind of a longer way to go than what immediately seems easy. Actually, it might take a little longer. Let's go ahead and build some more windmills. I'm going to build them the way that we can, which is kind of the cheesy, close-together way where they clip through each other. But again, remember, we can always delete these later and uh, do it however we want. It's our game. We can do whatever we want. Ooh, well, there you go. We've now unlocked the Tier 2 oxygen tank. That's cool. So blueprint screen shows that we've unlocked the tier two oxygen tank. 
Now, in order to get the tier 2 oxygen tank, we need silicon and magnesium. So, magnesium, silicon. So, now we can go out there longer. What we have to do is take our tier 1 and upgrade it to a tier 2. So, basically, we take that off and uh, pop it back on as we uh, take it out of our inventory. So, it's not like we're making a new one. We're just upgrading the one that we have. Now, we can be out here for like 200 seconds versus what? We started with 100. So, we've doubled it. So, it feels good, man. Feels good. There's so much to learn. Let's go up to the, um, let's do what I mentioned before and go make a box up here for ourselves. Actually, wait, let's not be that, uh, unwise. Let's first bring some oxygen with us and go see a derelict or a wreck or whatever you want, uh, want to call it. A wreck sounds cool. We're going to go find a wreck. A yeah, T-Rex. T-He-Rex. All right, let's go back to our base, build some oxygen. We need some water too, so we'll make that. So let's make some oxygen. And remember, we're doing this for our future selves, you know? Future self. That guy. All right, some more cobalt. And then we certainly want more things for storage. We'll leave these here. I want to make some water. I do want to put that back. No, we're good. Okay, so... Iron is good for storage, and then water, and yeah. So when we eat space food, the space food gives us maybe about half, a little, maybe a little less than half of our food, the heart. Uh, water fills us up completely, so just keep that in mind. Also, as far as I'm aware, the base power is also linked together, although I'm not sure if that's changed much. As far as I can recall, it's all linked, uh, so that way a base doesn't really need wiring, that kind of thing. Look at that. Ooh, and we found a blueprint microchip. We'll come back to this box on our way back down. There's a lot of loot and booty in there. So, wow, crash site. Why is this ship here? At a certain point, a company will start contacting us via email. We'll set up a communications disk or a dish, and we'll set up our computer, and they'll start dishing out the emails and being like, hey, here's your mission. You got to terraform this planet. Essentially, like we're a prisoner, and in order uh, to clear our prison sentence, we have to terraform this whole planet. But as you could imagine, many people have tried to do this before, and we're kind of unsuccessful. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Let's go ahead and build a little platform here. I think we have to build on platforms. But we can also build in these and save us, too. The uh, We could build, like, a, another little shelter here. So we don't necessarily have to just bring the boxes. We can literally just build another little house here. So let's plop this down if we can. And maybe we'll put it... Uh, maybe we'll move it a little bit. Let's use that deconstructor that we bought. Or that we crafted, really. Plop that down. Plop down a living compartment. And this is something that I've ended up doing many times in the game. Even after getting oxygen... In the game, it's wise to have these for storage anywhere and everywhere across the map. So, um, if you find new material, if you want to have a uh, like a, a marker or something like that, a milestone, it's good stuff. It's a good, helpful thing. Okay, let's see if we can make a door before we die and get inside. Yeah, cool. So it doesn't really look nice, right? It's not up to my standards, but hey, it works, you know. And you can always make it look nice after you don't die. That's that's a that's a good tip. Okay, now that we built this, let's build some more storage. And uh, oh, oh, we can make a table. Yes, that desk there is where we should be putting our monitors, th those little uh, blueprint screens and things from before. That's really what we should be putting those on. But uh, you know. In a pinch, you can just set it on the floor, and it doesn't really have a requirement to have to sit up high or anything like that. Okay, um, I'll leave the water here. I'll leave 202, and we'll go inside the uh, wreck here. Now, I don't have a microchip for a flashlight yet, so it's going to be rather dark in here. In fact, very dark. It's about to get very, very dark, and we're not going to be able to see much. We're going to just kind of fumble around in the dark and see what we can find. If there's anything any survivors hello oh there's there's something in there we can break through this there we go okay and there's our tier one heater yeah okay cool so we got our iridium and whatnot so that's where we can build that from is by uh, basically salvaging things that we've found and hopefully we don't get lost in here Kind of a little foolish of me to go in there without the uh, flashlight, but, uh, you know, I was excited. Can't blame me. Now, let's see if we can find a secret. Oh, also, there's ice there in front of that uh, 
what looks to be a cave entrance. So when the planet gets a lot warmer, we will be able to um, go through there once we've created enough heaters and the planet is warm enough. Look at this! A golden box. Check that out. A golden crate with a golden seed, some uranium, iridium, aluminum, and super alloy. This is great. And it is the secret that I knew was here. Helping you out. Go on top of the wreck. You're good to go. All right, let's go ahead and give ourselves a little water. Actually, we'll wait a little bit. I don't even have water, actually, on me. Okay. More materials gathered. All right. Oh, oh, oh. Being a goober. I'm being a goober. My mistake. Now, you can't accidentally delete boxes if there's something in there. So that that's kind of a fail-safe. There's one of the models that you saw earlier in the, uh, the Nugget Lounge that we built. That was pretty cool. And what are these things? Oh, yeah. Aluminum and super alloy. Nice. Okay, we don't need to worry too much about O2, but we do need some water, so let's take a drink. And let's see if we can make a crafter up here, too. So we need iron and silicon to make a tier 1 crafting station. And good to make these in any area where you're making a little outpost. You should make outposts and survival, like, shelters out in the field. And then you should also have your main base. That's a good way to start. Magnesium and silicon is what we need here. Silicon. So, uh, magnesium... We'll need more silicon for the uh, flashlight. So that's going to be the best way to get into that derelict wreck is to be able to look around. Now, there's lots of secrets inside there, too. So there's lots of boxes. There's lots of uh, data pads, lore, um, you know, things that you can read and uh, find out more about who is here, why they're here, and, uh, like, who, who, why people keep coming here, you know, that kind of thing. Find out the story. And it's all told uh, through those, uh, like, computers and data pads and things like that and then things get real interesting past that the ships are easy to find they're like right on the surface like you're meant to find them no problem like you'd see them from miles away but there's some other secrets um around let's just say you know if you, if you know what i'm talking about don't spoil it you know let, let everybody find out but there's some there's some cool things out there let's just say am i saying aliens yes yes i am but uh, actually, to be fair, we are the aliens, right? We're not from this planet. So we're kind of like an alien species that is now inhabiting it. With bees and fish, trees, flowers and grass. Making it such a lovely place for many. In fact, some may say the happiest place on... Wait. We'll grab some more magnesium and silicon here. And come back for the cobalt. I don't think these things uh, despawn, uh, if at all, or very quickly, so... I'll come back for the cobalt later. Usually I underestimate cobalt. Like, I always think, like, oh, I'm never going to need this cobalt. Get out of here, pal. And then I end up uh, going back exactly to where I dumped all my cobalt to get it because it's important for something. The solar panels require that, of course, the oxygen, and it'll be used in uh, some other things later. So don't don't discard anything. Be a little hoarder. I'm telling you, just hoard all of your materials. It's, it's important. It, it'll be good. All right, let's build the Tier 1 heater, too. Let's get that done. Just to say we did it. And we can plop this inside if we want to. Or I think we can put it outside on a platform. Maybe it has to go inside, but uh, now we'll plop that in the back. It'll be like our little oven. A little popcorn uh, microwave. There we go. Da -da -da. Cool. All right. Oh, and it says to uh, craft the screen progress. So we're going to go research that. Oh, and I wanted my flashlight too, so that's good. I think the more interesting thing, though, for us all would be to uh, go and check inside that wreck. But unfortunately, we don't have uh, a Tier 2 backpack to get all this stuff. So we'll have to abandon the construction one. So we won't be able to build anything. We'll have to switch out and retool. Let's go ahead and take this down. And that uh, microchip that we found, we do want to bring back with us to the main base, to that research thing. And that's what we'll unlock, like, the Tier 2 backpack. But now we have a flashlight, so now we can get through this wreck. And you can see how important it is to to bring the right stuff. There we go. But again, we're going to get a lot of materials from this. So, uh, oh, there we go. Now the Tier 2 backpack's unlocked. Excellent. And then we should be able to uh, decode more uh, things through those microchips. So there's two ways to do it. One, by unlocking things by hitting goals like we just did with the 300 uh, TI. And then also, ooh, space food. Fabric, water, yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff in here, and a lot of little uh, hidden and secret ways to get into things. So just take your time here, and know that there's many things like in the back. Oh, you can see a tier 2 heater back there. I think, 
Oh, this is cool, actually. If we can't carry the material with us, it just dumps iron on the ground, and then we can just pick it up later. But there is a Tier 2 heater here, and there's iridium in that, so we can even speed up further our uh, heating process. Unfortunately, this ship is deactivated, so these things are not working. But there is a generator back here, and there is some fun to be had with these things. You'll have to find that out later. <gasps> but some lore. Ooh, I hope we make it. Uh, keep in mind, too, if you uh, stand around, uh, you will be using, uh, I think, O2 when you read. Got another uh, chip, so bring all that stuff to base. So yeah, all this stuff here, we're going to have to come back for. You will be making multiple trips into these things. Or if you bring friends, I guess another set of hands is helpful. Bigger backpacks and bigger oxygen tanks will help you in those wrecks. And those wrecks are not just ships. There's many other things to find, including uh, large, large ships. Large. <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead and uh, go back to our base. We'll uh, leave a few things here, and we'll kind of have to go back and forth and back and forth. But this is how I like to play this game at the beginning, is kind of a management simulator of bringing things to and from your base. And it is cool to make these little outposts and then transport things. It gets easier when you get the, um, when you get the jet pack, and then, of course, it gets really easy with the teleporter. And one thing that I've done is essentially made like an Amazon fulfillment site like out in the middle of the desert. You remember that one little uh, place we teleported to? If you make a huge facility out in the di out, out in like the distance, you could make like these huge like endless facilities for storage of like iron and things like that. And uh, when your all of your automation is kicked in and it's automatically harvesting these things for you, it's a good idea to just constantly um, you know be uh, taking these things and storing it. And then, of course, your drones will do that. But I like to do all the things myself, honestly. Because then I like to uh, kind of keep an eye on what's what's happening. You know what I mean? And it just, I don't know. It just feels good that way. But you do what you want. Like, it's your game. You can build everything or uh, build minimal stuff. Like you, you, you do you. Okay, we have a microchip to decode. We unlocked a T1 mining speed. All right, cool. And also T1 agility boots. Cool. So that helps us to move a little faster, so we'll need the fabric that we found in the ship that I left behind, and also some aluminum that we found in a box, too. It's good stuff. And then there's also a way to reduce the mining speed by 10%, so out in the field we can ca uh, carry more stuff. But check this out. Our Tier 1 backpack now becomes a Tier 2, and now we're able to carry so much more stuff. And uh, we'll have to upgrade our suit in order to um, have more stuff on us, like the, uh, you know, the, the construction ship at the same time, too. So things get a little um, a little tight on space for a while. You want everything in order to build more stuff, but it is very hard to build more stuff because you need more things for more stuff. Make sense? Okay. Alrighty, folks. Well, I think that is it for our first look at uh, Planet Crafter for a while to celebrate the 1.0 release. This is a, kind of an early access of 1.0 that will be coming out again on uh, April 10th. 2024 and I'm very excited to play some multiplayer as you can see in the corner it's also multiplayer beta too so some of the things you may see here may change right before the 1.0 version and probably will improve and get better after 1.0 this uh, husband and wife duo have again done some really cool things in this game and it's been awesome to showcase it on the channel because um, indie games are really doing things differently and when people are coming into the the space with just nothing but pure passion and just endless updates and they just want to make a fun game that's what I want to be involved with this certainly just seems like a really great idea that was just crazy it's like what how are you gonna terraform a whole planet planet that'll never work and then magically trees pop up everywhere and water and yeah so no pressure it's a, it's a cool game right all right well again check down below in the description if you want to get this one for yourself and for a friend make sure you also smash like and become a subscriber today thank you very much for watching and I'll see you fine folks next time thanks for watching planet crafter see you soon and by the way we'll be streaming more so get ready bye everybody